Will they even kill programming? Definitely not. Does Divine something new? Is it some kind of new software? Definitely not. I can remember at least five similar projects with pretty similar functionality. Right now we are here in Desert Bledovska, near the Kluchy village. The Polish desert. Let's see. Divine was developed by Cognition Labs. And please do not be confused by Amazon Cognito because it is authentication service. And if you ask me, did Cognition Labs make something new? I answer you, no. Looks like no. I can remember at least five or even six uh, pretty similar, even open source projects. And the most important thing that all of these projects work based on three parts. LLMs on backend, Lang chain framework and chain of things and agents. I'm pretty sure that Divine also works based on these things. The LLMs was introduced almost two years ago for white publicity. Lang chain and chain of thoughts technology were introduced almost eight or even nine months ago and agents were developed maybe one year ago so divine not something pretty new it is just simple and convenient interface for using agents long chain think of sorts and llms nothing more i believe i'm still in the waiting list for divine and looks like cognition labs isn't exactly in a hurry to give it out, but we'll see. Now move on to several open sourced and not open sourced products that are pretty similar to Divine and that you can try right now, even on your local environment. One of the oldest and most famous tool is GPT Engineer. GPT Engineer has more than 50 thousand stars on github and this software allows you to run agents based on llms right on your local environment on the server on the different benches of environments and you can create different engines with different roles and group them to generate coding solutions gpt engineer software and similar softwares allows you to specify software in natural language so you just pass your task or pass your high level business description of your uh, application and gpt engineer start working and in the end give you uh, workable code right in the folder on your computer what do you need more Looks like nothing. Programming die. <laughs> but no. Also, you can ask AI to improve this code. You can make some refactoring. Uh, this agent and long chain model can improve itself. Just uh, try to start code, try to run code, uh, see the bugs in the console log, try to refactor it, try to fix it, and again again and again until the program will be stable this is pretty simple explanation how this kind of software work no any magic here i need to give you a little explanation what the lang chain framework and chain of thoughts i can simply try to explain you this is the technique and the framework that based on this technique where you or your program ask llm think before provide final answer think in several steps analyze the steps and make in several times before get the final answer and that's it what is agents because it sounds like something weird something difficult but under the hood agents 
is a small program that communicate with LLMs instead of you. For example, developer agent can communicate with uh, chat GPT regarding development tasks. Testing agents will communicate with LLMs regarding testing stuff, stuff and so on. There also can be management agents, there also can be uh, task agents the small programs who manage the queue with all of the tasks. So agents just the simple programs or sub-programs that working under the hood of your application of GPT engineer, of GPT pilot or under Divine. Pretty simple conception. Second, the most uh, famous project previously named as GPT Pilot and now you can know it as a Pygora extension for Visual Studio Code. Uh, this extension works in a pretty similar way. You're not just uh, writing code with AI Assistant, you give a tasks, you give a high-level description of your project right inside your Visual Studio Code and Pythagora provide you workable code of your application. Next bunch of software related to, let's say, virtual office. This, uh, those software also works on agents and Langchain and LLMs, but here you can imitate your working teams like it works in your real office. So you can create agents who will be designers, you can create developers, agents, you can create uh, testers, managers, and then try to uh, say them work together. Uh, most famous projects in this kind of software sphere is ChatDev and maybe MetaGPT. So you can check the link in the description below and try it by yourself. And last one software that I want to mention in this episode named DevGPT. And it is also software that can provide you workable application code. But the guys who developed DevGPT makes little bit more. They provide you an opportunity to convert your Jira tasks right into pull requests in your code base repository. Totally automated system. This project, by the way, closed sourced. You need to pay for trade, but if you want, you can do it. In the end, let's speak about why those systems can be good enough for us as programmers. These systems really good in, for example, creation labs tasks in your university. If you're a student, you need to provide some workable code of your laboratory task, you can use a GPT engineer or divine or something like that. And those systems really can provide a good and smart enough decision for like university laboratory tasks. Also, those systems can provide you a workable code of small applications. For example, if you don't know how to write workable quicksort or you don't know how to write workable flappy bird game or snake game or some different small amount of code that can work as, a, as an application, you can try to use this software for that purposes. And now let's talk about why those systems are bad. Firstly, and most important here, is that those systems not smart enough to write enterprise level software. We need to have a lot more powerful systems with much more biggest context size, with much more larger LLMs under the hood for provide really good quality or enough quality enterprise level products. Do not expect from those systems that they can provide you good solution for, I don't know what, for, for messenger like WhatsApp or Telegram, for social network like Facebook or Twitter. No, those systems not so smart. So they can provide you workable and good enough code only for small application for learning, for studying, and just for fun. Nothing more. And next one, not pretty good point. Those system works longer than you're waiting from them. For example, in presentation video of Divine, person who present this system make several cuts right inside the video. And you can see the time between these cuts, one hour and even more. 
So for the simple refactoring task with the wine, you as a developer gonna to wait several hours of working this software on your local machine or on the server. So it is not like a five minute task. Uh, and good quality, good quality uh, solution from DevGPT from Divine will take several hours or even more. Don't wait in that it will be like one minute, like click button, and then one minute, and then you have a good quality application. No, you need to spend several hours. I already tried GPT Engineer and GPT Pilot, and I can say that they really can work all night, for example, just for generating workable snake game. In the end, I want to conclude my general thoughts. First of all, Divine will not replace programmers at least in several next years. We still do not have so powerful LMs uh, that can provide really good, good quality applications on enterprise level. And second important thought that Divine is not something like really fresh new that we uh, didn't see before. So nothing new. Divine, just a hype. Just a hype. Subscribe to the channel, smash like button, check out our uh, AI tool catalog and see you in the next my vlogging video. Bye!